Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. 20 Minute Leaders is a proud supporter of Make-A-Wish Israel and tech to peace and is in proud collaboration with Secret Chord Ventures, J Ventures, Riverside FM, Fusion VC, Birthright Excel, J Impact, Leap, Google for Startups, and Hippo, and in media partnership with C-Tech. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Today, I'm with Larissa Amir, Managing Director of Merck's Healthcare R&D Center in Israel. She's the member of Merck Global Healthcare Discovery Technology Leadership Team, leading global projects and teams across geographies and cultures. She's also part of a Women in Leadership program, mentoring leaders in healthcare. Larissa is an executive leader with broad experience in the pharmaceutical industry, from large-scale companies through small, medium businesses to startups. She has extended experience in process development, analytics, manufacturing, and technology transfer in the frame of pharmaceutical regulation. Larissa is involved in major business decisions of startups, companies' growth strategy, product portfolio due diligence, and technology evaluation for potential strategic collaborations with companies or investors. Welcome, uh, Larissa Amir, Managing Director of Merck R&D Center in Israel. Thank you so much for being here. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Really excited to be with you. I'm, uh, I'm excited to dive into your world for these uh, 20 short but awesome minutes, the world of healthcare, the world of, of Merck, the world of research and development from your side. Before we dive into to Merck, research and development, what does it even mean? to be the managing director of it and what your personal passions are within your current line of work. Tell me a little bit about your own, your own journey. We, we just shared with the audience a little bit about who you are and your past experiences, but connect the dots for me as to sort of what brought you to the person you are today. Okay, with pleasure. Um, actually, I've, I've started my professional career um, as a lab scientist at a young Israeli biotech company, which uh, was a joint venture with, with the Weizmann Institute, uh, with a clear vision to develop uh, recombinant proteins for therapeutic use. Um, at the time, I, I can share that this was a completely new domain in pharmaceutical development, uh, using novel recombinant DNA technology for biological uh, drug development. Um, I guess you know, th- you know that traditionally, um, uh, Drugs, drug development was, was of chemical molecule entities, um, not biological large molecule. And so, so, so obviously it felt super pioneering and, and also it was a quiet, enlightening period of time um, where I actually learned what was required to develop, uh, manufacture, analyze a new molecule and taking through the entire regulatory path and eventually register it as a new medicine for patient. You know, it's super exciting. And eventually this, this drug became a blockbuster drug, uh, today selling annually in more than 1 billion uh, euro worldwide. So I wow. think it's, it's quite an achievement for a small biotech company in, in, in Israel. And, and for me, obviously, it enabled, uh, you know, a very steep learning curve. And, and, and since then, I, I've, 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 I have had a very dynamic career. Um, joining a startup company in the field of glycobiology, uh, where we were pioneering with glycoanalysis uh, using lectin on a chip. Um, then later, I took a consultancy role supporting um, small emerging biotech companies in the field of, of regulatory and compliance. And, and product registration. Uh, and again, here, one of the companies actually reached the market and widely used with their hepatitis B vaccine. And now um, I'm, I'm over a decade with Merck, um, which is a multinational company, as you know. And at Merck, I had, uh, I had done local, regional and, and, and global position. Basically, leading projects and team of, of increasing the uh, scale and scope across borders and, and, and continents. And, and I can share that, that my last role actually uh, required a relocation to Germany, mm-hmm. which I did. 
um, alone, without my family. <laughs> wow. Um, and, and where I spent uh, nearly three years. So, so basically, I've, I've taken the global product quality position, a leading multinational group, which was responsible for the product quality of, of healthcare portfolio, uh, basically late stage and early stage molecular development, as well as uh, life cycle management of, of commercial product. So really the entire healthcare portfolio. And here again, I can proudly share that during this period of time, Merck has launched its uh, last product. Um, and, and my team is had heavily supported with, with that launch, which is a, um, a cancer treatment for non-small cell uh, lung cancer for patient with, the, with a specific genetic mutation. And, and six months ago, I'm back to Israel, uh, becoming the managing director of the Healthcare Research Center. And I'm proud and privileged to lead um, a group of talented and creative uh, scientists which are today part of the global R&D organization and, and are involved in several strategic uh, global discoveries. Phenomenal. I, obviously, I have to say that your, your dedication and your scientific nature and your, your love for the science and for the, the research and the innovation here really, you know, it shines through. And, and I'm curious to dive deep a, a little bit onto that. So. You as a, as a researcher, as a lab scientist, as an innovator in this field, let's dive in a little bit what that means to you. What does that process entail for you as a researcher and what really does it align with your own set of values or, or characteristics? So I think, I, I think, um, Looking at my, I mean, I think I can think of, of several, um, you know, things that, that, you know, brought me to, to who I am today. So of, obviously one of them, you know, myself, my, my personality, uh, my characteristic, my background. I think ever since I remember myself, I've always wanted to do uh, something meaningful, but but you may say, who doesn't? I mean, I always wanted to make an impact and, and always had this starvation to, to do more and more. And, and I always asked myself, what's, you know, what's next? So with this constant wish to, to go beyond and above and, 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 and I, and, and I think that uh, th this is something with my inner personality. And so th th this has been enabled. Obviously, in 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 this development in this biotech world, which always there are new things and 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 there is purpose and and there is an impact because we are touching you know human lives. Of um, course. And I. And How do you I, choose I, what problems to deal with? How do you choose what? You know, as a scientist, you can decide to dive into many different fields. How do you make? How do you decide what is the most relevant? field for you right now to be dedicating either as a lab scientist back then when you just started or even more so today as a, as an R and D managing director that you have to now sort of shine the light on, on what's the relevant direction here. So I, I think that, that, you know, it's, it's as, as a glow, as a, um, as part of the global organization basically you are um you you follow the the, the global strategy it's it's not sure. that you are um do what you, and you don't do what you want you you are uh, in line with the global strategy and and one thing which is uh, strongly uh, i advocate is that we need it, it, it's a small you know it's a small site in israel part of the global r d we need to be globally um integrated not locally mm -hmm. independent. And so obviously we do bring a lot of um, ideas and innovation to the table. And this goes for the, you know, through the big company governance and, and we choose, but this whole needs to be within the strategy of Merck, which is today um, immunology and oncology mainly. 
So, so, mm-hmm. so these are the like the, the driving force. Of course, we are complementing it with with an external innovation, and we are constantly looking at um, you know the the, the the Israeli biotech is uh, the Israeli ecosystem. Let's say is, is super vibrant and rich in ideas, and 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 we at Merck are are super open for for uh, collaborating with with the academic groups. Um, with the uh, with entrepreneurs, with clinical and research sites, so we are in all kind of uh, different uh, you know models. So, and I think that this is also enriching the uh, the 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 R and D internally. Incredible. And so, if you're looking now at you as a managing director of the R and D, what is your vision for for Merck in Israel? What is your vision for you as a managing director? Here at this R and D center, where is it at today? Where do you hope to for it to become, and what needs to happen for it to be that way? So I, I, I think the I think the challenge ahead of us, and I think it's it's well known that the, the biotech process aiming to reach uh, the patient is is very lengthy and is very costly process. It, it takes on an average, uh, I don't know, twelve to fifteen years, and approximately I don't know two point five billion euros. Uh, to bring a product to the patient, to the market. And so I think that all pharma companies aspire to enable faster and precise development of, of innovative medicine with less failure at the end of the road. Um, and, and to do so, we will need as a whole, you know, all the, all the, all the pharma companies to, to capitalize on early stage breakthrough innovation and of disruptive technologies, mainly coming from this intersection of uh, biology and technology, basically combining bio and tech capabilities, uh, bringing, I don't know, computational and prediction tools, uh, artificial intelligence tools, machine learning, robotics, 3D printing, organ on a chip, human tissue samples, and, and many, many more technologies to make this it, what we call translational process from molecule discovery to human medicine more efficient, more precise, and, and more sustainable by, by maybe reducing use of animal for preclinical testing. And all these all these efforts are already started to be done, and and hopefully uh, mm-hmm. ending up uh, with, with more success at the end of, of of the road. And I think that this would be possible uh, through collaboration. Mm-hmm. As I said, with academic groups, with, re- with research centers, with the clinical centers wh- where they own the clinical data and hospital, as well as with the governmental uh, programs, entrepreneurs with, with, with the, you know, state of the art uh, um, technologies and with, and with also, uh, uh, you know, competitive industries. And, and in this field of, of, of AI, we are now collaborating with with uh, with four different um, multinationals. So we have AstraZeneca, Teva, um, um, Merck, and the third one, Pfizer and Pfizer. Yeah, together with Amazon uh, Web Services. So 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 this is a, a basically a collaboration to see how we can reduce or make it more eff- effective, efficient. The whole. Uh, a drug discovery using AI technologies, basically. Mm-hmm. You mentioned early stage uh, breakthrough innovation. Well, what did you mean by that? What what is that? You know, unfold that that term for me. So so as I as I mentioned, there is um, a lot is going on 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 the um, on the um, let, let's say on the intersection, there is there is a lot that is going on with, for example, organ on a chip. I mean, to replace uh, animal use. This all this three D printing um, using using basically live cells is 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 a very early stage. It's a breakthrough technology. I mean, three D printing of organs. It's using it for uh, to test. Um, medicine, it's, it's not something which is, you know, obvious. Mm-hmm. So these type of right. things that we need to like look for. And is that common for every R and D group in the world to be looking at these not obvious things? Is it sort of a Merck 
global idea or is this something that you're particularly excited to to bring out from the Israel ecosystem? Well, well, the Israel ecosystem is, uh, of course, supporting heavily in this external innovation uh, framework. Uh, obviously, it's there's a lot of innovation coming out from the US and from, from Europe. Um, but Israel, with its, uh, as, I, as, an, as I mentioned, uh, it all started uh, 15 years ago when, when, when Merck has established here a R&D center. And I think that Merck is the only one in Israel that has an R&D center. Um, and so this paid off because because today um, because today we have I mean with this with this uh, initiative Merck has brought two blockbuster from the Israeli uh, discovery so so basically they, it it paid off at, at the end mm-hmm. being very very that. cool has research in your context changed much. Over the last, you know, years, as you've as you've seen it emerge, you've been in work, I believe, two thousand and nine or so. Has have you observed sort of shifting mentalities in the way this research is done or the way these products are built? You know, as we're progressing technologically, are we also advancing conceptually from the 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 ways in which we're approaching these problem spaces or the ways that we're thinking through how to generate early stage breakthroughs yeah i mean i mean technology has evolved so much and you you, you cannot you know uh, um keep the the old fashioned way although the regulator and i think that this 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 pharmaceutical industry is heavily regulated by um as you know fda emea so i think that the 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 advancement also should be the regulatory path, uh, because because we need to comply with what is required, and 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 so th- there is um, there is um, you know conflict of, of of I don't know if it's a conflict, but you need to 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 to, to close this gap between the breakthrough innovation, and you need to uh, um, let's say convince the the regulators that this is the right path. So if that is happening, and if the regulator approves the drug with the new state of the art technology, then it become you know like a, a standard of, of 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 use. So it's it's not easy. Nothing is easy, as you know. It's not the tech uh, environment. It's much more traditional. It's much more heavier. It takes longer uh, because we are dealing with with, with patient life. So, mm, right, that makes a lot of sense. So, you know, one of the one of the things that I really love about this show, and you know, one of the reasons I do it is to understand why people do what they do. So, I'm I'm posing this question onto you now, Larissa. Why why do you do what? You do? Why have you been doing what you've been doing all these years? What excites you about it? What what what, what motivates you about it? Well, I, I think, I don't know. I mean, I, as I said, I mean, ever since I remember myself, I, 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 I wanted to do something meaningful. And, and I think that, that, that people, um, normally would like to do something meaningful in, in life. And maybe, maybe it's related also to my, um, you know, to my background. I, I, I mentioned before, I mean, as a child, as a daughter for, for, for a Russian immigrant, uh, uh, who, who made Aliyah to Israel in the late seventies, I think I was, I was five years old at the time and, um, without knowing, knowing the language or the culture, you know, struggling to stand on my own feet, um, in a new country. I think I, I could not rely on my parents, you know, for help with, with school assignments or with, question about, I don't know, this new, totally different culture. So, so basically I had to deal with everything by myself and I, I try to excel. And I think that, um, this is also my, what my parents has, 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 uh, have expected me to do no, no matter what. And I think that this, this, you know, 
notion or my ambition to, to, to raise the bar and, and challenging myself, but, but, but also my, my surrounding. I always challenge, you know, the, my peers and colleagues. And I think that at Merck, I, I, I found this um, enabling environment which is aligned with, with my curiosity and my ambition, my, my, my passion to challenge barrier and for, for, you know, for this quest to, to, to bring impact and purpose. And I think this is what drives me, basically. Larissa, thank you so much for your time, your energy, and the, the thoughtfulness. Best of luck with uh, running Mertz R&D Center in Israel. It's a very, you know, it's, a, it's very... A lot of pride for the Israel ecosystem. And uh, I'm excited to see the breakthroughs and the innovation coming out of it. So really, thank you for your time and your energy. And uh, best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank you.